fit. I'm straight. Repeat the play. Going out to the left, then cut right around the tree, then head for the lamppost, and that's when I hit you. You got to leave me just right so I catch it right in front of the lamppost. They don't call me old golden arm for nothing. Hey, this ain't no joke. Well, it ain't exactly a touchdown either. Touchdown? Man sitting at that lamppost is the whole ball game. Something's wrong. What, no salt? No, it's delicious. That's the trouble with bringing your lunch from home. Okay. What's that supposed to mean? Well, what's the point of eating your lunch in school if you can't complain about it? Do you remember how much trouble we had getting Jason Allen to take his physical education class? I think he said something about sweating and not getting paid for it. It's for suckers. Look at Richie and Jason. That ball almost hit that girl. I don't think so. Didn't you see it nearly hit her in the head? No, she's right. It looked like a well-planned and executed play. I'm awful sorry about that. I bet you are. The little fella, he got a scattered arm. <laughs> I guess I'm just lucky you move so fast. I guess you could say that. See? No harm done. That's the first time I've ever seen Jason even talk to a girl. Maybe he's apologizing for almost busting her nose. I usually go home right after the seventh period, except when I go to the library. Well, now, ain't that a coincidence? I get out the end of seventh, too. Well, I'll be seeing you. Thanks for saving my life. Folks, I think something has finally touched Jason Allen. Well, it's happened to the best of us. Love's a virtue for heroes as high as the snow-high hills, immortal as every great soul is that struggles, endures, and fulfills. Don't let that fool you. Inside, I'm as hard as nails. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Jason, let's make it. Be cool. What you want to hang around here for? This is where it's happening. Here, outside school? That's right. They were going my way. Maybe they are. Hey, where you going? Later, baby. Hi, Richie. Jason isn't wasting much time, is he? I just remembered who that girl is. That's Elaine Harris, George Harris's daughter. So what's wrong with that? From what I know about George Harris, I wonder what he's going to think about his daughter and Jason Allen. His daughter and... Incredible. What's incredible? The way a woman's mind works. Jason talks to a girl and you practically got him married. Anyway, Harris is a pretty good guy. He's one of the few parents that's willing to volunteer once in a while when we need him. I know. But Jason Allen and Elaine Harris? I don't know. I guess Seymour Kaufman isn't the only romantic around Walt Whitman High. I guess not. I hope not. Come on. You are Lane Harris. That's right. How did you know? And you live at 452 South Idley. And your home is at 214 Whitman's Patterson. Hey, that's right. And for a period, you got friends. I don't understand. What do you think I do? Go around hitting on every chick that comes along? I like to know what I'm doing. Have you been following me around? Uh-uh. Then how do you know so much about me? You really want to know? Of course. It's there. There on your book cover. 
Jason Allen of the FBI. Where'd you get my name? Oh, I got my ways. I guess you do. I dig your natural. Why don't you do the same? I'd like to, but my father wouldn't like it. It's not his hair. No, but I'm his daughter. You see, I like to please him. Don't you think we should try to please our parents? Never thought much about it. And I dig riding. I really groove on horses. So does my Uncle Bill. Really? He bets on them all the time. Oh. How do you make the scene? Well, for my coins, I got a part-time slave over at Brown's department store. And for my soul, I dig the sound. Me too. Yeah. Now we're really living. Can you dig those out? I'm right with you. Stone so. Do it, do it. Fiendish. Hey, man. Hey, look who's here. Hey, Jason, I didn't know you knew about this place. You didn't. I brought you here twice last week. That's right. How did I forget that? Oh, hi, my name's Richie. I know. You're the little fellow with the scatter arm. What? Great food here, huh? Terrible. Great sounds. Stone soul. Yeah, too much. Well, I guess I'll find a seat. Uh-huh. You know to sit down. Right. Well, I guess I'll see you later. Hey, be nice. Hey, Richie. Yeah? What's the matter with you sitting here with us? You mean it? I'm not budding? You kidding. We love having you here. Oh, swell. And anyhow, you're gonna need somebody to help you with all that terrible food. Oh, that's great. Just put them over there. Put those Man, here. I've had it. Are there many more? Just one more stack. I get it. It's a long ways to the basement. What's with him? What do you mean? I mean, our newest volunteer has never volunteered before. Not only that, he's even started handing in his homework assignments. Mm, I don't know if I should tell. You've been sworn to secrecy. No. I guess there's nothing to be ashamed of. Can you dig? That dude's in love. <laughs> well, that could do it. Yeah, and he got his first day tonight, and he'll be clean on clean. <laughs> Clean on clean. This is Elaine's house. Elaine Harris lives here. I came to pick her up. I see. Well, come in. I'm Elaine's father. How do you do? And you're? Jason. Jason. Well, make yourself comfortable, Jason. I don't think we met before. Are you uh, new in the neighborhood? I'm not from around here. Oh, then you must have met Elaine in school. That's right. <laughs> Great school, Walt Whitman. It's OK. You studying for college? No. Huh. You on any of the teams? Walt Whitman always feels a powerhouse football team. I ain't interested in that jazz. I see. Would you like a cup of coffee? Don't drink coffee. Good for you. I sometimes drink 10, 12 cups a day. Make yourself comfortable. You'll find some magazines there. Like they say, a man who can read and does not read is no better than a man who cannot read.
Hello, Jason. I'm Elaine's mother. Hello, Miss Harris. Elaine said I should come at 7.30. <laughs> yes, I know. But you know how girls are. Here I am. Hi, Jason. Hello, Elaine. Only two minutes late. I think you set some kind of record. Okay, we'll be going. Bye. Have a good time. Just a minute. I'm sorry, Elaine. I'm getting so forgetful lately. But your grandmother's coming over tonight. I meant to tell you. So you'd better postpone your date with Jason. You know how she'd feel if you weren't here. But, Fred, you didn't... I didn't tell you either? <laughs> I'll forget my own name one of these days. I'm sorry, honey. But Grandma was here on Sunday. She's coming back again tonight. I'm sorry, Jason. You'd better make it some other time. And she didn't sleep all night because of what happened. She said that. Well, don't she look sleepy? Well, you tell her when she go home, she better take a nap. Well, it's like the end of a beautiful love affair. Not at all. Then what's going on? A lover's quarrel. She wants to make up. He doesn't. Not yet, anyway. How'd you know that? Watch. Jason's still playing it cool. He won't look at her. Now's just about the time Elaine will give him a very soulful look. Liz, you're amazing. I tell you, women have got a lot of things going that we don't know a thing about. Now she's telling Richie if Jason wants to be so stubborn, that's just too bad for him. All of a sudden, just like that? It's the surprise element that does the trick. Now what? Now Richie passes out from exhaustion. Okay, get set for the big moment. When Elaine stands up and makes out like she's gonna leave. Now what's going on? Jason will now very sheepishly get up and go over to her. Trying to look cool. But not succeeding. Now that's absolutely fantastic. Liz, you've predicted the future. Now what's going on? Can't you tell? No, you're the fortune teller. They're making a plan. What kind of a plan? You know, I haven't the slightest idea. Well, how do you do, sir? My name is Richie Lane. I have a date with Elaine. You have a date with Elaine? Yes, sir, I sure do. May I? Uh, yes, of course. Come in. Hi, Mrs. Harris. I'm Richie Lane. Hello, Richie. Oh, great. You know, I like a house with a lot of magazines. I do a lot of reading myself. Well, I always say, he who doesn't read and does is better by far than he who do and don't. I go to Whitman. I'm practically a stray A student. Very good. Except for a few Bs. Listen, Richie, do you happen to know a boy over at Whitman called Jason? I'm ready, Richie. Swell. Um, who is that, Mr. Harris? Uh, forget it. it. It's not important. Well, I guess we'll be going. Bye, dear. Have a nice time, you two. Uh, Elaine. Yes? Enjoy yourselves. Thank you. No fear, Mr. Harris. See you around.
Oh, what a beautiful day. Even the weatherman's on our side. I'm not too sure things gonna be all right. Come on, Jason. Wow, baby, I thought you was gonna never make it. Keep your cool, brother. You're working with the pro. Okay, pro, meet us back here at 10. If I'm gonna meet you back, I go too, right? You go too, wrong. But there ain't no happenings hanging out here. Anyway, whose idea was it? And who stuck his neck out and who? Jason. Okay. Then let's split. Let's get the wheels and make it. Hey, that was fun. When do we do it again? When you get your own girl. Huh? And now if you don't mind. Hey, brother, you know what a dual sin is? Oh, sure. And it's time for you to make it. Get lost. Jason, everything was too much. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Richie. Anytime. Just call Richie Lane Escort Service. Didn't I tell you no sweat? Smooth sailing like a cabin cruiser. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she sure is a swell girl. She fine. Good evening. You know I wouldn't let you take a lane out, so you decided to get your friend to do it for you. I suppose you think you're very clever. I don't think I'm clever. I sized you up from the moment I saw you. Wait a minute, you didn't even know me. Don't worry, I know you. At least I know you're a type. If you've been straight... Straight? Have you been straight with me? But all I... I don't want to hear another word. And I don't want you to see my daughter again, and that's final. Don't turn me off. Listen to me, listen to me a minute. All I wanted to do was talk. Hey, home. That was a raunchy deal. What happened to Jason? Is he ditching class because of what happened the other night? Maybe. Your father really gave it to him. I know. But Jason shouldn't be missing school. He's hurting real bad. No, that was a low blow your old man gave him. You just don't understand my dad. Try to tell Jason that. Anyhow, what Jason's doing is not going to help anything. Your father was pretty mean. Will you stop saying that? My father's really a very kind person. Not to Jason, he wasn't. Maybe not. I don't feel so hot about it either. But the way Jason is taking it, not just missing school. What can we do? I just got a brilliant idea. I'll bet. Whatever's eating you, Jason, ditching school's not gonna help. Ain't nothing wrong. Nothing's wrong? You haven't been to school in three days. I ain't hurting nobody. What about yourself? You really let Mr. Harris get to you, didn't you? You wasn't there. You don't know what went down. Jason, somebody's getting a sock to him every day. They don't just give up. No matter what I do, a man like that thinks I'm nothing. You've been put down before. So have I. Because there's always somebody trying to step on your neck. But you don't give in. It hurts, Mr. Dixon. I know it hurts, Jason. But you can't let that man keep you down. You're better than that, and you know it. He turned me off like quick. All I wanted to do was give it to him straight. A chance to give him my side. To 
is that wrong? No, man. And those of you who were once lucky enough to attend the summer camp for a week or two know what I mean. So, what do you say? Let's give our kids a chance. Let's prove to them that we're not all a bag of wind like they say we are. <laughs> Let's show them that we care enough to give. Looks like he really put it over. He sure did. He's quite a speaker. I wonder how well he listens. Why? Just wonder. I'll see you in a little while. You know, if it wasn't for this Jason business, I think Mr. Harris was really a nice guy. You know, my father was the same way. He practically fingerprinted every guy who rang the doorbell. But I bet he liked Pete, didn't he? Oh, no, 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 no. For the longest time, he didn't think Pete was good enough for me. He wouldn't even let him in the house. What would you do? I got Richie to take his place. Oh. <laughs> I feel very strongly about kids that aren't given their fair chance. Oh, Mr. Harris, would you come with me a minute? There's something I want to show you. Where are we going? Well, this won't take that long. Hello, Mr. Harris. Dixon, what is this? Well, Jason is a kid who feels he hasn't gotten his fair chance. He's the kind of kid that would abuse any chance he got. How do you know if you don't give it to him? There's nothing more to say. Maybe not for you, Mr. Harris, but if you don't mind, there's a lot I'd like to tell you. Dixon, I'm surprised that you're having a hand in something like this. Mr. Harris, you talk good, real good, but you don't know how to listen. You know what's that supposed to mean? You see, you're so busy talking, you ain't got time for what the other guy's trying to say. That's not true. You hurt me the other night. You hurt me pretty good. I guess it's your business who Elaine, see? But that's no reason for you to put me down the way you did. You made me feel like nothing. For a while, I even believed I was nothing. No man's got the right to do that to another man, because it's not true. And that's what I wanted to tell you, Mr. Aaron, that you were wrong. I'm somebody, no matter what you say. I'm all right now, Mr. Dixon. OK, Jason. We've got a PTA meeting downstairs. Good night, Jason. Richie, let's make it. Cool it, there ain't no rush. What do you want to hang around here for? This is where it's all happening. All what happening? Here we go. Mm-mm. Shoes are too much. Show sure what there's going my way. It could be. What do you mean, could be? If you bring your big brother in line. Him? That cat? No, you don't want nothing to do with him. Well, I'm the man for you, sister. Oh, can't you tell?
to the left, then cut right around the tree, then head for the lamppost, and that's when I hit you. You got to leave me just right so I catch it right in front of the lamppost. They don't call me old golden arm for nothing. Hey, this ain't no joke. Well, it ain't exactly a touchdown either. Touchdown? Man, sitting at that lamppost is the whole ball game. <laughs> Something's wrong. What, no salt? No, it's delicious. That's the trouble with bringing your lunch from home. Okay. What's that supposed to mean? Well, what's the point of eating your lunch in school if you can't complain about it? Do you remember how much trouble we had getting Jason Allen to take his physical education class? I think he said something about sweating and not getting paid for it is for suckers. Look at Richie and Jason. Almost hit that girl. I don't think so. Didn't you see it nearly hit her in the head? No, she's right. It looked like a well-planned and executed play. I'm awful sorry about that. I bet you are. The little fella, he got a scattered arm. I guess I'm just lucky you move so fast. I guess you could say that. See? No harm done. That's the first time I've ever seen Jason even talk to a girl. Maybe he's apologizing for almost busting her nose. I usually go home right after the seventh period, except when I go to the library. Well, now, ain't that a coincidence? I get out the end of seventh, too. Well, I'll be seeing you. Thanks for saving my life. Folks, I think something has finally touched Jason Allen. Well, it's happened to the best of us. Love's a virtue for heroes as high as the snow-high hills, immortal as every great soul is that struggles, endures, and fulfills. Don't let that fool you. Inside, I'm as hard as nails. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Jason, let's make it. Be cool. What you want to hang around here for? This is where it's happening. Here, outside school? That's right. They were going my way. Maybe they are. Hey, where are you going? Later, baby. Hi, Richie. Jason isn't wasting much time, is he? I just remembered who that girl is. That's Elaine Harris, George Harris's daughter. So what's wrong with that? From what I know about George Harris, I wonder what he's going to think about his daughter and Jason Allen. His daughter and... Incredible. What's incredible? The way a woman's mind works. Jason talks to a girl and you practically got him married. Anyway, Harris is a pretty good guy. He's one of the few parents that's willing to volunteer once in a while when we need him. I know. But Jason Allen and Elaine Harris? I don't know. I guess Seymour Kaufman isn't the only romantic around Walt Whitman High. I guess not. I hope not. Come on. You are Lane Harris. That's right. How did you know? And you live at 452 South Idley. And your home is at 214 Whitman's Patterson. Hey, that's right. At Fort Pitt, you got friends. I don't understand. What do you think I do? Go around hitting on every chick that comes along? I like to know what I'm doing. Have you been following me around? Uh-uh. Then how do you know so much about me? You really want to know? Of course. It's there. There on your book cover. Jason Allen of the FBI. Where'd you get my name? 
Oh, I got my ways. I guess you do. I dig your natural. Why don't you do the same? I'd like to, but my father wouldn't like it. It's not his hair. No, but I'm his daughter. You see, I like to please him. Don't you think we should try to please our parents? Never thought much about it. And I dig riding. I really groove on horses. So does my Uncle Bill. Really? He bets on them all the time. How do you make the scene? Well, for my coins, I got a part-time slave over at Brown's department store. And for my soul, I dig the sound. Me too. Yeah.